Doc on the Run. We help injured runners run. In this lesson, we're going to discuss the three ways to confirm you have a plantar plate sprain. Now, if you're a runner and you have some pain and maybe you sort of feels like you have a little bit of swelling when you're walking in the bathroom, standing on tile uh, in that area at the ball of the foot, the base of the toes, you might be concerned you have a plantar plate sprain. I mean, maybe you were diagnosed with metatarsalgia. Maybe you thought you had a metatarsal stress fracture. But maybe after listening to one of these talks I've been giving on plantar plate injuries, you started thinking that you might have a plantar plate sprain instead. Obviously, if you're treating the wrong condition, you are not likely to improve very quickly. If you wanna maintain your running fitness and get back to running as quickly as possible, you have to have the correct diagnosis and start getting better. In the simplest sense, there are basically three ways to tell for sure whether or not you have a plantar plate sprain. So let's talk about these three approaches runners use. Now, the first approach that runners use when they're trying to make their own diagnosis of a plantar plate sprain is to do their own self-diagnosis. The first and simplest way is really just to push on the injured ligament and see if it hurts. This is a relatively simple step, but it's one that many injured runners actually skip. Look, it's really not complicated. If you have injured the plantar plate ligament, and you press on it, it will hurt. If you stretch it, if you load it, it's gonna hurt if you aggravate it. It's a little bit difficult to explain in text or audio exactly how we do this when I'm looking at a runner in person or when I'm doing a Skype call to show a runner how to do it themselves. But that's part of what I've put in the plantar plate spraying course for runners. I created a number of video lessons with 3D animations that show you exactly how to test the plantar plate ligament so you can tell whether or not you actually do have a plantar plate injury. So if you've been diagnosed with a plantar plate sprain by a doctor and you're confident in your doctor's diagnosis, you can obviously just skip this step. The second approach is to make the injury worse. Now, believe it or not, this is a technique and methods runners sometimes use at home to tell for sure whether or not you have a plantar plate sprain injury. Of course, this method is violating one of the cardinal rules of medicine. First, do no harm. So don't blame me if you deliberately try to make the injury worse and you screw up your foot in the process. So this is your official warning and disclaimer. Don't try this at home. Now with that disclaimer, for educational and entertainment value only, I'll explain the method. The assumption is that you could have a plantar plate sprain that is so minor it doesn't even hurt when you push on it, when you load the ligament, or you stress the plantar plate ligament. If you can't tell whether or not it hurts, it's hard to truly make a diagnosis. So the idea is that you do some particular activity that you will know will flare it up and make it more angry. It will then be more tender. When the plantar plate ligament is injured and tender, it's very easy to tell that you have discomfort when you push on it or you stretch the plantar plate ligament. So if you do box jumps, you go run stairs, you do a bunch of lunges barefoot or otherwise engage in some activities that you know are going to hurt, it will likely flare up. Once the plantar plate ligament is a bit more irritable, it's easier to palpate, push on the ligament, stretch the ligament, and feel tenderness associated with that self-exam that confirms you have a plantar plate sprain. The third method basically assumes that you have a plantar plate sprain that is minor and you just attempt to treat it. If you choose the treatments that will definitely help the plantar plate sprain, it will start to improve. As your foot starts to improve, your pain goes down and you start to feel better. Now, when that happens, of course, you have by default confirmed your diagnosis of a plantar plate injury. So with this method, all you do is decrease the stress on the ligament decrease the inflammation around the plantar plate ligament and the joint capsule, and see if the plantar plate ligament starts to heal. Obviously, trying to make the plantar plate sprain better is a much more sensible approach than deliberately trying to make it worse. The plantar plate sprain course for runners shows you exactly how to decrease the stress to the plantar plate. The plantar plate sprain course also shows you how to decrease the inflammation that can damage the plantar plate ligament and prevent healing. Of course, 
We also show you how to get back to running as quickly as possible without putting yourself at risk of an additional injury and another setback. Remember, it's really not that complicated. When you have a plantar plate sprain and you want to get back to running, you need to confirm you have the right diagnosis. You need to decrease some stress and strain to the plantar plate ligament, decrease the inflammation around the joint, and then follow a very structured return to running that will allow you to retain your aerobic fitness, rebuild your running fitness, and prevent you from getting another overtraining injury. But if you do that, you can heal the plantar plate ligament and keep running. Doc on the Run. We help injured runners run.